In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. We have had a huge translucent planet in the sky that's been observed for six years that we still can't say what it is. And it's always being caught from live cams out in Alaska. And of course, we're gonna have people that refuse to acknowledge reality and say it's a speck of dust. So here's a six hour time lapse of the sky moving, not the camera moving, and you see this moving. Again, this has been being seen for six years now. I really doubt that speck of dust has been there for six years. Besides, you can see it almost turning as it goes through the sky. I'll zoom it in right here. It's just, it's insane. And you can see how translucent it is as well. And I was also able with the same camera to get two different light sources. This one on the right ended up becoming the sun if you would play the thing as it moved out. Now apparently whenever they see this mysterious object in the sky, they turn off the cameras. And this and this were taken six days apart. Now we know that an ember is actually a dark red color. Which you can clearly see here. No, it's not. A lens flare has its own lens flare. So we know it's not Nibiru. So what is this? I mean, the pattern design on it looked kind of like a spaceship, you know, like going down the center and the notches on it. I'm sure the Alaskan people have legends as far as what this is. I really don't know what that is. I don't know if maybe the sun is at a distance off camera and it's just reflecting into the lens and that's what's giving that, that planet-like effect. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts because it does look like a planet out in the distance, but I have a hard time believing that be the case. But we will see. I've been seeing a lot of these videos on TikTok recently of this mysterious planet showing up out of nowhere. In 2003, the US invaded Iraq because they had access to weapons of mass destruction. What exactly does that mean? And were we told a cover story for something else? Saddam Hussein was allegedly interested in the occult. His mother sometimes worked as a fortune teller, and it was said that Saddam himself had inherited some of his mother's psychic abilities. It was rumored that he had success summoning jinn to do his bidding. Saddam had personal magicians and sorcerers from all over the world. One of them was even interviewed by a reporter from the Washington Post in 2003. Saddam also believed he was the modern reincarnation of the biblical Nebuchadnezzar, the king of men and beasts. In the 1980s, during the Iran-Iraq war, Saddam became obsessed with the Babylonian ruler and spent millions reconstructing Babylon. Babylon was where the Tower of Babel once stood and where Iraq stands today. Was the Tower of Babel a form of ancient portal technology and did Saddam acquire it? In April 2003, many facilities holding ancient artifacts were damaged. Some were completely destroyed and others were looted. Although many have been returned throughout the years, some have appeared illegally in antiquities auctions. But what about the artifacts that were not returned? And what else have we not been told about the invasion of Iraq? Well, that's a new one to me. I, I find it hard to believe you would think that if someone had that technology that they would be very successful to this very day. And I don't think that that was the outcome for him. Craziest predictions of all time, part one. 14 years before the Titanic sank back in 1898, a short story predicted of what would happen. Morgan Robertson wrote a novella called Frutility of the Wreck of the Titan. Now the book detailed how the largest ship ever made would sink, but not just that. In layman's terms, he was saying that this ship was so highly advanced, biggest thing anybody had ever seen, and so techy, and that it crashed into an iceberg. Okay, mate. Now the Simpsons are notorious for predicting things, but you probably haven't seen this one. Of course, they predicted things like the election of Donald Trump, World War Three, bunker drills, all this kind of stuff, which I mean, you kind of could imagine. In 1993, an episode broadcast where a magician called Roy was mauled by a trained white tiger while performing on stage. Fast forward to 2003, and Roy Horn was attacked by a trained white tiger on the stage and mauled. In 1994, they also predicted the horse meat scandal. And even all the way back in 1994, predicted autocorrect on iPhones, which I mean, you can kind of imagine that happening, but still, pretty crazy. Now, this is gonna get pretty messed up. Up. So make sure you hit that follow button. I'll see you in the next one. I have seen so many videos on TikTok about the Simpsons and how they've predicted the future on a lot of different things. I don't know if it's just extremely coincidental or if maybe there's just fake news going on and some of these episodes aren't even relevant to what people are saying that the predictions are because I've not really done a deep dive on the episodes to see where they tie in to see if it's actually authentic. But I do like to theorize that maybe the creators of like the Simpsons or other TV shows are from the future 
and they've traveled to the past so that they could have a one up in society because they have all of this information that makes great content, you know? That's an interesting theory, not saying that I believe it, but it is one that's fun to think about. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts about The Simpsons predictions and also about the Titanic. That was an interesting book. I've never heard of it. Let me know. You are going to want to see this. This is completely freaking me out. I'm not saying any of this is true. This is for entertainment purposes only. But this is creepy. Scientists have recently discovered seven of these objects in space, what they're depicting as alien structures who are sucking the energy out of a star. On the religious side of this, this has already been depicted as an angel. Yeah, an angel. I can't remember what religion it is, but this is how they depicted angels. It looks extremely similar to what they found in space. Specifically in the book of Ezekiel, it says right here, the book mentions eye covered wheels inside wheels that travel with creatures. So while scientists are saying that this is an alien structure absorbing energy from a light source, the book of Ezekiel is saying that this is a structure that is transferring an angel. And the significance that they found seven of them literally says in the Christian Bible there are seven archangels in ancient history. What? Also weird part of this is the second bullet. They are also known as the Watchers. Do you know what movie just came out recently? This movie that just came out in 2024 called The Watchers was literally about fallen angels. You can be not religious at all, but this is seriously creepy. I heard that that Watchers movie was actually pretty bad. Let me know in the comments if any of you've seen it and if it's worth actually watching because I'm kind of interested. I just don't know if I want to waste my time on watching a, a bad movie. But as far as what the scientists have found in space that looks kind of like Dyson Spheres or these Watcher type angels, I've looked online and I'll pull up a couple of photos to show you here and here of what they're talking about exactly and I do see the shape of the Dyson Sphere. It just makes me wonder if it's real or if it's fake because one, I cannot see these with my own eyes. I do not have a telescope powerful enough to actually go out into space and see these as well. So there's no way for me personally to confirm these other than what scientists are saying. And, and when it falls back on NASA, I have mixed feelings on whether or not I believe NASA. And it also kind of makes me think that maybe this is all a big setup for us to fall into Project Blue Beam, where the government is just giving us these tiny little pieces that says, hey, aliens are out there, be prepared for them. So when the aliens come, we're prepared for them, even though they're actually a governmental psyop and they're probably controlled by the government just for us to start a war with them or something. I don't know. My mind goes everywhere when it comes to Project Bluebeam. And when I see things like this, it kind of makes me think that this is the first step of Project Bluebeam on getting people thinking that there's actually aliens out there or they're starting to discover aliens. I could be completely off the walls on this one. It's just something that really runs through my head. Let me know in the comments of what you think. Do you believe that these are actually alien machines? Do you think that they could be angels? Or do you think that it could possibly be a Project Bluebeam setup? He found a strange pipe in the middle of the woods, but what he sees inside is horrifying. Action Adventure Twins on YouTube made a haunting discovery deep down an old pipe while exploring the Appalachian Mountains. Check this out. The mystery pipe. And lowered it down this pipe and it just kept going and going and uh it opens up down there there's something down there they decide to drop a gopro camera to see what's inside and capture this Something hiding in the dark can be heard breathing. But as the camera first made its way inside, for just a split second, we can see the part of some sort of strange creature. 
What exactly did the twins capture living deep down inside the Appalachian Mountains? Let me know your thoughts. What would go through my mind is I would think that there's someone down there that's extremely injured. Maybe they went caving off in a far distance cave system and they met that path and they're injured or something. And that's just their final breaths you're hearing. I would be really scared that someone's down there injured. And it's also really weird that there's just a random tube just in the mountains, just leading down into a, a cave or something. It could be like an air pipe for a mine shaft. I really don't know, but I would like to see a little bit more of this video in particular. If there's a follow up or anything that you're familiar with, let me know in the comments because I really want to know if they actually went and discovered or explored that cave or if they found out what that noise was because there was definitely something down there breathing. Have you seen all this stuff with fruit <laughs> turning into plastic? Dude, oh turning my god. Into? This is insane. There Mama. are people that are going to grocery stores, coming back and looking and like going through and eating their veggies and their fruits and stuff like that. And they're having rubber slash plastic food. It's There's crazy. This, this mom, she gave her child blueberries and they're just like kind of complaining about them. So she dumped it down the garbage disposal, turned it on and then it was like a like it was like caught, turn it off, pull it out, and the blueberry is still whole, and it was rubber. Dude, they're messing with our food. Things are getting way too expensive. There's no way they're not cutting corners. Oh, yeah. It's insane. There's so many videos of it. There's a video of a dude holding a banana. It was unopened. Literally peels it, looks normal, and he bends it. Doesn't break. It's proven. They're coating our fruits and vegetables in this kind of, like, plasticky thing, but yeah. it's a carcinogen. Your fruit is not real. I have been seeing so many of these videos on TikTok that it's not even funny. I'm concerned with what's going on with our fruits and vegetables. Have any of you noticed food becoming more fake, rubbery, or just different in general? Let me know. I have a feeling in the future all this rubbery food is just going to be normalized and kids are going to think that that's normal, when in fact, it is not normal. The title of this video is called Meteor in Budapest and I'm reading the comments and people are saying that that's a drone on fire. <laughs> There's one person saying that that's their soul leaving their body after they get that good hawk uh, it, It's a crazy mess. If any of you know what that is, let me know because that can't be a meteor, right? That's way too controlled and way too slow moving. If anything, maybe it is a drone on fire. Well, it took me 48,000 tries. But I have invented electrolytic resin, and it fucking works. I just got this hooked up, and it continues to climb. So this is only millivolts, but we'll see how high we can get. This, right now it's just reading one cell, but I think I've learned something important from this. And still, we're getting pretty... I'm starting to slow down. Now normally in a battery in a galvanic cell you'd have a liquid that is what's connecting the two electrodes together. But in this case I've taken that liquid and turned it into a solid resin form. You can kind of take a look at this and see just how solid that really is, which is pretty cool to me. So you can see here it's still climbing. Um, it takes a minute for it to start juicing. I'm not really sure what that's about. Now, I don't know if I'm the only person to ever invent electrolytic resin, but I cannot find it anywhere. So if y'all know about it, let me know. Or if you can think of any cool ideas that I should experiment with. I actually have this saved for um, another project. I created it to help me create something else. So <laughs> hopefully it works out. But either way, I am super Super happy that this resin is working. I'm a little confused as to what I'm looking at in this video. Are they basically making a battery out of resin? Is that what I'm understanding? Or is there something totally different going on? Because if she's making a battery out of resin and that thing's actually holding a charge, that's pretty cool. I don't know how she's charging the battery if she's using actual electrical currents or if it's just gaining the energy itself. If that's the case, that's amazing. And this person needs to really be careful with what they're posting online because they might not be posting online much longer. Let me know in the comments of what you thought about this. If this is actually a resin based battery that's holding a charge or gaining a charge, that's pretty impressive. And hopefully there will be more to see with this content creator because this is a pretty new video. You had that guy on talking about the pyramids. Jeff Drum. They were using pyramids for chemical plants. 
producing certain chemicals to strip mine and fertilizers so they could build their, their empires, which makes a lot of sense because if you look at the pyramid, it's just a complex structure. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for it to be a tomb or anything that's been the modern narrative. It is a it is some sort of ancient tool. And so his whole thing was like you can you can scientifically prove that they were they were producing chemicals in these things. He said as he went to the Red Pyramid it smelled like ammonia and this is weird. When he deconstructed the pyramid and they looked at it, basically said that the the way that it's built, chambers themselves actually are the exact same proportions to the way that they make ammonia now. It's fascinating because I never heard that before. You hear about power plants and what are yeah, these yeah. things. Definitely not tombs. Yeah. They buried all the kings in the Valley of the Kings. And so, so somebody who was very go-getter pharaoh was like, no, 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 I'm going to be buried in that thing. And I think that's kind of how it happened. And then, you know, once you have tradition, it cements itself. It really feels like every single empire that ever existed was like a ripoff of heaven. Mm -hmm. You do it just like he does. But we don't need God. We don't want you. But we do have our structure. We do sort of have our, our person on top. And then we have all the things below. It seems like every year, it gets more and more difficult to know exactly what the pyramids could potentially be. At first it's tomb for pharaohs, then it's a power plant, now potentially a chemical plant. I don't know what to believe as far as the pyramids go as of yet. I like to believe that they were used as some kind of frequency-based energy plant, I really do like that theory, or a charging mechanism for alien spacecrafts, where aliens just hover over the pyramids, sit on top of it, and it charges their spaceship. Maybe a long time ago, aliens set up these pyramids across the galaxy so that when they need to stop and get gas or energy, they can stop plant their vehicle on top of the pyramid recharge and off they go into the stars. I, I also, I really like that theory. I, I, I kind of think that that might be what they're used for is just ancient, ancient civilizations beyond the stars. We might even consider them gods. Do you have your own personal beliefs that's different from anyone else's? Because I really love hearing theories about the pyramids. I cannot unsee and unfathom what I just saw and what I just fathomed. This parallel is absolutely huge and it will make a lot of sense what's going on on the earth right now. Be back in one second. Can somebody please tell me what the f this is? I live in Mansell, Texas, and this is in the sky today. And now there's helicopters out circling the area. If anybody has any idea what this is. When I saw the bend at the bottom of the staff, I knew exactly what we're looking at. It's going to blow your freaking mind. I kept thinking, where do I know that bend from? From a sit. Who carries the sit? Death. And in one second, I'm going to show you that what was in the sky has an aura and is real. And now in other mythology, death or father time has the sit and has the hourglass. Who else has a sit at the very end? You'll see. So by screwing around and modifying the picture, we can literally see what looks like an aura, but the aura is not just on him. This is the telephone wire, and this is the mysterious figure. Energy. Energy. Look around them. The aura. The energy. This was literally something alive in the sky. But why right now? This parallel gets huge. Revelation 6 verse 7 is the fourth seal. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I look and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed him. So Death sat on the fourth horse. And hell followed with him. What's that mean? His name was Death, hell followed him, and power was given him over the fourth part of the earth, to run alive with the sword, and with hunger, with death, and with the beast of the earth. Don't we know that God talks to us through signs so we know what's happening? And this just happens to pop up when humanity is being plagued by all sorts of things. In Revelation chapter 14, we see one like unto the Son of Man coming from the clouds having a sickle in his hand. And the angel said, Thrust in your sickle, the earth is ripe to reap. Not only are we in a time where hell is unleashed upon the earth, we're also about to see the splitting of the wheat and the tares of the goat and the sheep. We are living within parallels upon parallels upon parallels. But this will be the last time. Definitely cannot argue that that looks like someone in the sky floating there. I'm not going to say it looks like a sight that's in its hands, but it does look like a club or something, and it definitely looks humanoid. I'm sure that this is just a cloud anomaly. I don't know if I necessarily believe in it being the Grim Reaper or a sign from the Bible because I feel like if there would be a biblical event that it would be worldwide. It's not something that would just be captured in one remote area and spread across the internet. I feel like the whole world 
would see some kind of biblical event like this. So I don't really believe it to be biblical. I don't even believe it to be like Project Bluebeam. I, I really think that this is just an odd formation in the clouds. Now, if we start getting more and more of these videos where there's figures floating in the sky and it looks like they're holding objects, then it will start to become more concerning and more believable that there's something going on there. This is the most haunted place in the whole of Europe. You won't believe what went on here. This right here is Halska Castle in Czechia, but is also known as the Gateway to Hell. Let me explain. If you look at this castle, you can see photos of windows and doors, but they're all fake. They are literally just stuck on the outside because there is no entrance to this building and no exit, let alone any windows. Because the whole building was built around this giant hole in the middle. Well, this place was used back in the 1940s towards the end of the Second World War by the Nazis. And they were using this for some insane experiments on people. Now, there isn't any information exactly what happened during this testing, but it's thought to be almost like MK Ultra, but even worse. Now, this place is actually a museum now, and you can go and visit it. People who have walked by, especially in the evening, have reported seeing strange creatures, people calling their names, but no one's around, lights flickering, banging on doors and windows, and I mean, the list goes on. And if you look at some of the photos of this place, it is not short of anything but terrifying, especially when you can imagine what actually was going on here it's just terrifying. So yeah, make sure that follow button and I'll see you in the next one. It would be such a huge accomplishment for me to be able to become like a, a paranormal investigator. I would love to do something like that where you go into well-known haunted locations, you do your paranormal investigation, you see if you can't find any ghost or not. That sounds like a blast to me. Maybe one day I'll be able to do something like that because I just have a hard time believing it to be true or maybe they just thought some weird things were happening. I want to experience that firsthand. And I know some people are probably upset with me for saying that because they don't want me messing with spirits and things like that, but I think that it would be really fun, it would be really exhilarating, and who knows, maybe I'd find something that made me more of a believer in the spiritual and paranormal world. The solar panels we have now are garbage. <laughs> and I learned this because I invented this battery. It's a specialized AGM battery that can power a small house for about four days without uh, being recharged, but it can also trickle charge from solar, and then it can also rapid charge when your power comes on. It's designed for brownouts. And through this process of creating this battery, I discovered that the solar panel I was trying to utilize only had a 15% maximum conversion ratio. And I'm like, 15%? Why is this not converting at uh, 70, 80, 90%? So I started looking, I said, maybe it's this product, that, maybe it's this company I'm using. So I started looking for more solar panels. And every company I went to, to get solar panels, some of them were even 3%, 4%, 2%. I even found one that was 1% conversion. And I'm going, why are these panels not converting electricity? <laughs> I found, a, I contacted one company and they sent me the link to a government page. And basically it's a, it's a government order. And basically this bill uh, bans the, uh, the use of solar panels that can convert higher than 15%. And this has gone around the entire planet. There's no company that you can find on this planet that will give you a, a solar panel that actually converts power higher than 15%, which is the craziest thing I've ever seen. So they've got a boot, the boot on our neck even with the solar panels. If we can get solar panels to do what they're supposed to do at 75, 80%, all of a sudden, you know, you have all the clean energy you need. You can take a small amount of area out of Colorado where nobody's living, like a valley, and cover it with solar panels that have the right capacity for a conversion, and you can power the entire United States for free. Man, I'm absolutely certain that there's going to be some people in the comments that are gonna jump down my throat on this one because I played a Billy Carson video. I just wanted to hear what he had to say about the, the solar panels. The description of the video is called Solar Panel Regulations, so I was really interested in hearing what he had to say about it. I did not know he was going to go into detail saying that he, cr he invented a solar battery that can pretty much keep your house at charge for four days. That was a little bizarre, and I'll have to do a little bit more research to see if that's true. So if anyone has any info on the best way to obtain power through solar, through wind, however it may be, Leave a comment down below letting me know because I'm really interested in providing my own power if I can help it. 
and trying to get off of the electrical company. I saw this dude give a story on TikTok where he went to Bluff City, Utah. He's like, I don't believe in this whole simulation, but what I experienced there had me question if we're in a simulation. He said, every place I went, we were at this hotel and then we went to a grocery store and then a restaurant. People were weird acting. They were like not expecting someone to come in. He went to the, the hotel clerk and he said, hey, can we get some towels uh, for our room? She's like, oh, actually, I don't know where they're at. This is my first day on the job. What? And then he went to the store. Something wasn't working. <gasps> Weird. And she's like, I'm so sorry. This is my first day on the job. Weird. And then he went to a restaurant and the card wasn't working. He's, and she's like, I don't actually know how to work this machine. This is my first day on the job. <gasps> like a true machine. Then another guy who duetted it, he stopped in Bluff City and he saw this hitchhiker girl walking on the side of the road. He said 30 miles down, the same girl. Stop it. Was right walking. Now. I think I saw something similar to that. But like, it always reminds me of the Truman Show. There's got, there's got to be a civilization or a community that's pulled that off or done that in the past. No matter yeah. how terrible it is, something's happened. North Korea. Like <laughs> I've only been to one part in Utah, and that was Salt Lake City, and it was so busy that there was no way that nobody didn't know what they were doing. I know here in the South, in these really small towns, you'd stop and wonder if some of these people even went to school. So maybe it's the same in Utah. Let me know. At first, I thought it was just like something vibrating and spinning in circles, but it completely disappeared. I have no clue what that was. What the hell is this? The man or a planet? It is huge. I'm pretty certain that that's just the moon. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if so. But that to me looks like the moon. It just seems like to me we have a bunch of people looking up in the sky for the first time. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And currently we're at 11,134 subscribers. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, Thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you for watching. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I'm sorry it's a short one today, but as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.